Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I'd like to talk a bit about the pelvic tilt. We're going to lead with that. Yes. The producer was quite surprised because we that was going to be our fallback. But I realized that I kind of need that to do this other thing that I want to do also. So the, if we have time for it, we're going to explore how do you get into those one-legged postures and where you're really supporting yourself and be able to root yourself in that? And then I realized that, well, unless you get your pelvis right, you will have a hard time with that kind of thing. It's all, you're always going to be kind of faking it. So uh, we're going to start with the, uh, with the pelvic tilt idea. And the idea with that, and this is something I've mentioned a number of times over the course of these conversations, but I'd like to explore a little bit and also get anybody's um, questions that they might have about it. The, uh, the, when we talk about a pelvic tilt, there's, if, if the pelvis is not, like the pelvic bowl is not like level, then you're going to create some distortions in the way you move. And uh, the way, uh, I'd say most of us stand with our weight in our heels is tends to, if you're, if you're leaning back into your heels like that, there's a tendency to slump forward and kind of stick the chin out and, and, and you have your, your back. And, and I would say of the people I've checked, you know, probably about 70, 80% of them are actually leaning backward and they feel that they are, no, no, I'm not standing upright. I'm doing like I've always done it. And I haven't fallen over yet, you know, uh, but it's a, uh, the, the, the idea is that if you're doing that, your weight is back almost as far as it can go. It's just a, a slight, a slight movement, a slight push that direction and you're over. You're, when your weight is in the heels like that, you're, you're kind of at the edge of the cliff at all times, which then means you have to tense up your, your legs and lock up your joints in order to not fall back. And we kind of get into that. So that's, so when we have this going on like that, there's a tendency for, for the, the butt to stick out and the pelvis to kind of tilt forward. We call that an anterior tilt to the pelvis. It's like the, your pelvic bowl is spilling out in the front. You know, there's also a, posterior tilt, you know, where you're, you're kind of, you're, you're, you're so uh, dropped under that, that it's, it's, it's leaning backward, but that's much rarer. Uh, there's also lateral tilt. And you see a lot of this, you know, I'd say most of us are guilty of it at some point in our life, particularly as teenagers, to just kind of hang out on one leg and just just kind of park in that, push the butt out to the side and lock up and, and you sort of hang out there on one leg. And you'll see this in a, you know, I see it in my Tai Chi students a lot too. They're just kind of, when they're, when they're hanging out listening, they're just sort of locked into this kind of thing. Say, hey, well, why don't you just kind of uh, go back to center and start to get your body used to the idea of having this um, alignment so that you are bringing your center of gravity toward the center of your body. Because if you're over here, then just like it when you're leaning back, you're creating this tension along the outside of your leg, particularly in the ITB or the iliotibial band, which uh, if you're at body work and the body worker kind of pokes a finger into that and you go, ah, that's because uh, that is hypertonified. It's, it's like it's stretched and, and tensed so much that it, it's locking up and it gets very tender that way. So we want to get it so that we're bringing more of your load on the inside of your thighs, inside of your legs. So you're feeling it down into the, on the, the big bones in your feet along the big toe line. So getting that, so the, uh, 
Why don't you stand up? We'll just, we'll just play around a little bit with the uh, exploring the, uh, those things. So the getting, like, uh, getting the feel of that. One thing that I want to say about the, the lateral tilt, because whenever you're like this, your, your hips, the, the pelvis tilts so that it's spilling out this way, um, is when that happens and you do that habitually, you will get a short leg. And a lot of people you know, come to me and they say, yeah, I'd say maybe easily a third of the people have one leg shorter than the other. And, you know, a lot of times they'll say, oh, yeah, that's always been that way. That's I've been that way since birth or whatever. And, and uh, then I work on them and, and loosen up the hip joints and like, oh, they match now. It's because they're locked up in that hip joint. They're, they're, they're favoring this position or this position or whatever. And there's a there is a tendency to lock up there, which then affects everything you're doing. Once this gets shorter, once the pelvis gets tilted like that, then it's going to affect all of your movements. And um, so that's going to, going to throw things off. And so a difficulty that people have in releasing the qua, getting sung qua, comes from the fact that they're not really, um, they don't have that, that pelvis, that pelvic bowl level. So if you can do that, so we just want to explore that just a little bit and just uh, do it this way. So the, you want to kick your butt out a little bit. So your, your definitely pronounced pelvic tilt forward, right? And, and have your weight 50, 50 and just feel into that, you know, and uh, actually start with your weight in your heels and do that. So your pelvic both, and then very slowly, deliberately turn to the left. So you're, you're loading up the left leg and you're turning and just notice the resistance you encounter in your hip joint as you start to turn, okay? So what happens then you, you notice that resistance and in order to get through it, you force it. And what does that do? It pushes your butt out to the side. I'll do it facing you. So here I am, I'm like this, I, I have this forward tilt and I turn, I find that resistance there. And rather than getting Sung Kwa, I'm just gonna keep pushing and notice that my butt goes out to the side so that I'm, it's out past the outside of my foot. My center of gravity is shifting to, the, to my left and I'm losing my, I'm losing, whatever route I, I had. So you want to get it so that, so now just flatten out, drop your, your Wei Lu, your coccyx, relax your lower back and bring your weight over the, the balls of your feet primary. You, know, you want to have it spread throughout the foot, but you want to feel that connection with the ball of the foot and flatten out the, the pelvic bowl and then now just start to turn to your left and notice that it glides. You don't have that resistance. You turn that way, it's like, oh, there's no, there's no, there's nothing there pulling back. It's because you're lining up and then just tilt it forward just a little bit and then notice that, oh, it grabs again. So this is something that you want to be very, very aware of as you're, as you're not just in your Taiji, but in your life, you want to feel that connection there so that you're able to, to, to get sung in your qua. So if, uh, let's just take it and feel the ball of your left foot, set the left knee, release your lower back so that your, your pelvic bowl is level, and then just allow yourself to spiral down into that left leg. And just notice how easy that becomes to do that. And notice how my body is lined up so that I'm, my center of gravity is over the inside of my foot. I'm not forcing it out to the side. 
Now we're going to go to the other side. You want to feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, and ah, spiral down to the left. You're sitting down, releasing down into that right leg. You're feeling the quad. Your pelvic bowl is level. So then now when you turn, you it's easy. It's like swinging a door. Like, oh, okay. And you turn back the other way. And it's like a door swinging in the breeze. Da, da, da. And if you can do that, then it becomes much easier to get some qua, which then allows you to connect up to your root, allows the energy of the earth to fill your whole body. And you have this, this yin power that goes throughout the whole structure. It, you feel supported. If uh, let's say you put your right foot forward, back here, put your right foot forward, and you feel the ball of the right foot, you push your right knee forward. And notice if your back is tense as you do that. You want to, as you push it where you want to release down, drop your, drop your lower back. So you're, you know, if you find your back is sticking up like that, you just, you, you drop your way loose so, so that your, your coccyx is pointing toward the earth. And so then if you do that, then you can spiral down to the right, turn to the left, spiral down to the left, Turn to the right, and you can move easily through the pelvis. There's uh, the, the muscles and tendons and ligaments that have been working very diligently to keep you from falling down for lo these many years. Um, they get a chance to take a break. And oh, you're just kind of, you're feeling supported by the intrinsic structure of your body, which is sung. That's, that, that's what sung means. It means to be supported by the intrinsic structure. So you're not having to work at it. You're not, uh, you're not turning and pushing and feeling yourself, pulling, you're feeling yourself, pulling yourself up by the roots as you turn. You, ah. You spiral down. It's just kind of like water flowing down, and you turn, and it becomes very easy, very effortless to do that. Okay, so uh, why don't you? Uh, uh, anybody have any questions on that? Any difficulties? Any? Uh, uh, did, did, that, did any of that make sense? Oh, good, 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 good. Everybody cool on that? Any uh, any questions? Any any difficulties? Anybody have any specific problems that you feel, you know, you know that? Yeah, I, I get the idea, but it's not working for me. Any of that? No, everybody's good. Scott. Yeah, I have to say that um, I kind of thought I was doing it until I asked Valerie if my back was straight. She said no. I fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> It's good to have a have a buddy to tell you if you're 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 leaning backward or not. You know, you can also do it. You know, uh, with a mirror or with a uh, camera, a uh, video. But uh, it's good to have a buddy to to uh, to let you know. No, you you think you're you're upright, but you're leaning backward. Well, he and, actually uh, wasn't leaning backward, but he sorry? he wasn't actually leaning backward but his butt was slightly popped out. Okay. Right? So he wasn't back. He was, you know, yeah. if anything, tilted a little bit forward and that made his butt pop out. So when okay. you drop the, the coccyx or the way loo, then he became straighter. And it okay. wasn't dramatic. It wasn't dramatic, but I have the eye. Good. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> Okay. All right. So uh, if there are no questions, we'll move forward. 
I wanted to get that in first because it kind of, it's an important uh, prerequisite to getting those one-legged postures um, as well as everything else, be able to, to be supported on one leg and to be able to confidently uh, extend from that so that you're feeling, you're extending from a very rooted, very stable posture. You know, I, I remember a very, very dramatic uh, demonstration, uh, Master uh, Yu Xing Yen, I think his name, uh, uh, Taiji teacher in, in Chinatown. He was, uh, he did a demonstration where he, he stood uh, in a golden rooster posture for maybe like three or four minutes. And, and meanwhile, handling all these attackers, you know, he had students who were attacking him, trying to knock him over. And, you know, and some of them very competent, but he was able to very effortlessly hold that posture for an extended period of time and, uh, and be able to have considerable gin while doing it. And so I think that, uh, you know, it made, it made an impression on me whenever I saw that. And I said, yeah, okay, it is possible to, to have that kind of thing. So, um, uh, you know, there are certain movements in various Taiji forms, you know, like in uh, the, you know, William Chen's form, you know, where you're going up into a golden rooster, stands on left leg, stands on right leg, you know, where a lot of people have difficulty getting into that posture and to be able to not be rocky while they're there. Other people are able to balance effortlessly and they look fabulous doing it, and um, but they have no root. So if you were to just touch them, they would knock, you would knock them over, even though they're able to be balanced. So what we're talking about here is something different than balance. And I think it's a point I've made often, but I'd like to reiterate it here. And that is when you're rooted, there's this connection and it's not just, you know, trying to get it to not topple over. You want to have a powerful post driven into the earth for that moment and be able to extend from that post and issue power from that. And um, that is, that's what we're going for not just as a martial art, but just the ability to walk around and not fall down and to not put your body through a whole lot of extreme stress in doing so. So a lot of us have developed strategies over the decades to, to compensate for the rather crappy body mechanics that we've got. And you know, we, we're faking it, but we're, you know, they haven't caught up to us yet. Um, but we want to like be able to, and to do it under stress, do it while someone is breathing heavy on you. And uh, that is the, um, you know, part of the advantage of doing it with a partner is that you can actually test and see, you know, where where do you where's your freak out point, whenever you're standing in a uh, in a one legged posture. The um, the other advantage to it is that you know you're, if you can have that confidence because you 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 then will feel more confident in all kinds of situations that, which are not necessarily quite so dramatic. You just, you know, if you have to quickly, you know, there's a patch of ice or a banana peel, then you can, you know, you can, oh, I don't want to put all my weight on that right now. Thank you. I would like to immediately shift back to this other leg and be able to, to maintain your, your, your stability in that. So let's do a little, uh, a little meditation with this and uh, it's um, 
you know, as much an energy exercise as it is a uh, you know a body mechanics exercise. The two kind of go hand in hand, and um, the more you're able to trust your structure, the more you're able to get sung and allow that chi to circulate through. So let's uh, let's play with this, shall we? Okay, so feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left. So here we're starting right here to get that feeling. Because what we're going to be, we're going to be picking up that left leg and and stepping with it. So to do that, what do we want to do? We want to really establish stability in the right leg. Feel the ball, and set the knee, and spiral down to the left. So you're loading up that right leg. You're feeling a line, the line of force going down through the ball of the of the right foot and turn. So now you have about 90, 95% pick up the heel. So you're really feeling all your support coming from that right leg. And you step out, empty step to the right, to the left. And just feel that, pick up the heel and step back. The heel and step out. You want to feel that stability so it's not hanging on for dear life. You're just making that step. So now feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, and spiral down to the right. So you're loading up the left quad now. Notice my butt didn't go to the side at all. It's just spiraling down, loading up that left claw, and then I turn pivoting on the right heel. Is it important to keep the pelvic bowl level as you step out? Yes. So the question was, is it important to keep the pelvic bowl level as you step out? And the answer is yes. So. If, for example, I'm stepping out and I'm tilting my, my body to, to do that, then I have to tense up my hips in order to make that happen. If I'm, if I'm pitched forward, I can't, I can't even get sung qua at that point because then, then my, my butt is going to stick out to the side. It's going to be very difficult to do that. So, so yes, yeah, so you want to really key is to get that pelvic bowl. So you're turning. So let's go back and just go back, put the here, put uh, your feet together and just feel that rotating, keeping your pelvic bowl level. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, still level, right? And you turn, your pelvic bowl is still level. You want the, the shoulders and the hips to line up so that they're both turning as a unit, right? You want to do that. And so if your pelvic bowl is tilted, you may notice that your shoulders are tilted too. You can do it the other way, which is your pelvic bowl tilts and you tilt the other way, but it's then now you're getting really screwed up. So you want to keep the, both level. So then you pick up the heel, and if your if your pelvic bowl is is level, then you're able to sit down into that leg very comfortably. Do the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, and spiral down to the right. Or yes, yeah, spiral down to the right. So notice that the shoulders stay level, hips stay level, and turn. Pivot on the right heel.
So you want to feel the balls of both feet. Feel your feet on the floor. Feel spread the, your contact spread throughout the whole foot. Feel the toes kind of touching into the floor. Weight in the heel, the outside of the foot, but mostly it's centered around the ball of the foot on the, the inner side, the, along the, the inner, the medial line. Knees are unlocked. And just by doing that, you're going to, it gives your, your spine a chance to release. Because if your knees are locked, if your knees are locked, it's much harder to, uh, to keep the pelvic bowl flat. Knees are unlocked, then it's much, oh, you can kind of sit down into your, into your, your quad, and just kind of, oh, poof, you're able to get very soon. Reach for the crown of your head. Tuck in the chin and open the jade pillow gate. Reach for the elbows. Reach of the fingers. Feel the energetic coherence. Release the quad and just spiral down. Feel very easy turn now that your pelvic bowl is, is level. Really just feel into that. Yeah, now feel the ball of the left foot. Set the left knee and spiral down to the left. So you're turning. Really feeling into the pelvic ball, feeling settling down into the left foot. And turn and pivot on your right heel so your foot turns out to about a 45. You want to just really just feel that. You're still loaded up in the left quad. You feel the ball of the right foot. Push the right knee out and set that. Check your pelvic bowl again. Be spiral down to the right. And bring your left foot in so that you're centered over that right foot. You want to bring that foot in so that you're able to gather your bits so that you can feel your center a little more condensed. And just, just for fun, take your foot out about uh, a foot or so, and just notice that you can do it, but it's more work. It's more work to maintain your center. Now bring it back in and notice that it's much easier to relax into this. So now just reach up with your knee and step down. I'm gonna keep your, your weight centered over that right leg and Feel the ball, set the knee, and reach up with the knee. Reach up with the knee and feel into that, and then set it down. Now step out, pivot on the left heel, 
to the ball of the left foot, set the left knee. So you're feeling it over the ball of the foot. And spiral down to the left. Relax, soon, very soon. And bring your right foot in. So you want to find that stable spot where you are confident. Like, oh yeah, this is, this is where my center is. So take a moment and explore. Notice how your weight might be in your heel a little more. So you wanna feel the ball of the foot and feel that responsiveness with that. Feel that you wanna feel it on the inside of the foot rather than on the outside. More forward than back. So that now, you sink into that quad and then you can pick up your knee and feel into that and then put it down and pick it up and put it down. So you just want to get that sense of, you want to get a little more confident. You don't have to lift it up very high. You can just pick up the heel and just pick it up an inch, but just enough so that you can feel that the, the left leg in this case is doing the work of supporting you and you're just take it and, and then play with the, your posture, find your centers. This is an exercise in locating where your center is in this posture because it is unfamiliar to most of us. So to get that and to really oh, feel into that it requires playing with it, right? Getting it so that, okay, what can I relax and do this? Now step back with your right foot. Feel the ball, set the knee, spiral down to the left. So you're loading up the right leg and draw your left foot in. Get the sense of confidence there. You want to feel that and feel the connection from your foot, your right foot, all the way through to your left foot. And then put the foot down and pick it up again and put it down. Bow down to the right and step back with the left foot. Feel the ball, set the knee, spiral down to the right, loading up that left claw. Feeling into that and draw the right foot in. So you want to bring it up as close to your center line as you can. If you try to reach out too far, let's say if I were to extend my, my leg like, like this, it requires much more, much more preparation than if I just picking it up here where I'm closer to my center line. Both can be done and you can, you can develop the skills to do both with root and energetic connection with Jin, but you want to work into it so you have that. So now what we're gonna do is put your left foot forward so that you and, and start in your back foot so this is um there's a um, a posture in uh in master chen's form which is golden rooster stands on left leg and it's it's a fairly common one in most of the yang styles and you know where basically you're you're you're, you're coming in like this and you're you're reaching out with your hand reaching up with your knee and you're getting, you're, you're having this, uh, being able to stand stably in this posture. So let's, uh, let's just see how we're gonna get in this, break this down. This is a tricky move for a lot of people. The big problem that most people have with this one and moves like this is that they're trying to go from, in this case, going from 
a snake creeps down, right? And just to go immediately into, into the posture, to immediately go into that. And it very difficult to do that. You can, you can, but it's not, it's very, very difficult to do that and be rooted and have gin in doing it. But if you want to be under control with that, you know, so let's say we're, we're here and we want to come forward with this. The idea is to be able to, to reach out and step in first so that you're loading up that left quad. So turn that left foot out, your left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the left, pick up the, bring the, the, the right foot in so that it is, you're, you're very close to the, to the left foot. So that whenever you then pick up your, your knee and reach out, you are under control by doing it when you do that. You're not relying on the momentum of the body to launch you into that position. You, you're coming from the, uh, the rooted leg. So you, you're coming up, boom, you're, you're bringing your right foot in, and then you point with your knee, you point with your fingers, point with your toes, and feel that, and you have that connection. Now step down to the right with the right foot, feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee and spiral down to the right. So you're loading up the right quad now. Keep your pelvic bowl level. Loading up the right quad, reach with your, with your crown, with your knee wand. But what we're gonna do, we're going to do this uh, golden rooster stands on right leg now. and you spiral down, you bring the left foot in, right? The left hand comes up and then you can reach with the, with the, with the, the left knee, reach with the left hand, boom. So you're here like this, you boom, you're like that. And you're able to, to connect up your root with the knee. So you want to, the key to all this is really, really establish your position first. So you hear me talk about ball knee qua, you tip to bike first set the ball, then set the knee, spiral down. And that's because you want to have that stable position, that stable post there which allows you to do other cool stuff with that. You're then able to, to move around and you can get much more expand, expansive once you are able to do it simply. You get that and you're able to then play with other things. But first you have to be able to control that very simple thing, which is to Place your foot down, set your knee, release the quad, level up the pelvic bowl, and be able to establish your central equilibrium in that one-legged posture. Uh, any questions? Valerie. This is, this is really not a question, but an observation that um, in those transition points, when you're going from, you know, an insubstantial leg, making a leg insubstantial and making the other leg substantial, that transfer, um, keeping um. the pelvic bowl level, I mean, you can do it. But I find it what what I'm working on continually is keeping that pelvic bowl level so that when I get onto that one leg and that leg is the substantial leg and there's no weight in the other leg, then I don't have to 
readjust my, um, I don't have to do an adjustment again. So it's that it's transition in anything, transition in seasons, transition in life in any matter, right? Transition, the transition periods are the tricky ones, are they not? They are. And uh, what I found um, largely by experimentation with push hands is that the key to being able to guide yourself through this transition is to be able to get very sung while you're doing it. So if your qua is sung and you, you maintain that, that, that pelvic bowl relationship, then you're able to, able to move freely, even with a lot of force being put against that. So, you know, the, the big, the big thing, you know, which I, I feasted on as a, as a push hands competitor, you know, was that transition. I think what you're talking about is going from back to front. You know, if this is how you do it, if you go back to front like this, then I would just find it very easy to just go across the body whenever, whenever the, uh, someone tried to make that transition. So, the, the way around it is to, is what we've been talking about for the last year, which is that you're spiraling down and turning. So there's never a point where you're not rooted. There's never a point where you cannot not only withstand force coming in, but that you're, 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 you're always able to issue power in those transition points. So the uh, uh, the key to it is that it is being able to um, access, at least in terms of movement, access the sung qua as you're doing it, and be able to maintain a continuity throughout the whole movement, so that each step. You're you're still rooted. You've got the central equilibrium, and and you're feeling that that whole body energetic connection. Stan. Yes. Uh, am I on? Yes. You are. Okay. Uh, I, uh, the only thing I could do is make an observation, and uh, after how many years of perform, I still can't do it and I'm beginning to see why. Thank you. Oh, good. Okay, specifically the, uh, like the golden rooster kind of stuff? Yes. Yeah, it's a, it's a tricky one only. because <laughs> we, we, we kind of launch ourselves into a posture like that, you know, hoping that this time it's gonna work and <laughs> it's, it's not how it works. You, no. need, to be able, you no. need to be able to do it to slow it way, way, way down. So there is no launching involved. And then you all the flaws in your body mechanics then become very apparent. And then you say, oh, okay, what do I gotta do now? <laughs> uh, just a comment, uh, mostly. Um, you know, I've, I've been working on this because I've actually been having trouble with just the very opening of the form and particularly that very first movement where I'm not really rooted. Um, and, you know, it's I always have more trouble with the leg that I've been you know, injured in the past standing on that one leg. But doing this tonight, I was able to do it on that leg with hardly any trouble whatsoever, which was really a huge. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Good. Good. You're welcome. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I think I think that is you know, just don't rush that, that yes. preparatory step. You know, I think that, that's really the key to all this is, is to get it so that, and be mindful of what your body is doing when you're in, engaged in that preparatory step, because that's when, particularly if you slow it way down, you'll notice where the old habits start to kick in. You know, all those 
program things, all those, those things that you've done, you know, a thousand times. And uh, you have to, at that point, push the, the pause button and say, okay, you know, give, give your body a good talking to and, uh, and get it so that it's able to very slowly, deliberately, consciously, mindfully execute these, these very simple steps and allow the, the noise to, to, to dissipate. Yeah, Scott. So yeah, just to uh, prove your point, I noticed while I was doing this that I was tensing up my lower back and my butt. You know, mm -hmm. and I realized once I let that go and sung, then it, and then I realized what I was doing. It, yeah. So yeah. I noticed while I was while I was doing it here just now, it's like as I'm talking to you, I'm not really focusing entirely on what I'm doing, and so you know, as I'm explaining this stuff, it's like oh, I have to. I have to get more attention back on what I'm doing because I'm starting to lose it because it's, it's, it's a thing where you, it does require a lot of focus in order to be able to do that and to be able to turn and talk to the mm -hmm. camera while I'm facing the other direction doing this, it became like apparent to me like, Oh, come on, Barrett, get, get it, get it together here. Get to get, uh, get the, nice. get the, thing, the train back on the track. So it's a, uh, uh and it, I don't think that process ever ends. I think it's something that you just keep, you keep going. It's never, you can never mail it in. It's, uh, <laughs> it requires a conscious focus each time. I, I don't know if other people have this problem or not, but <clears throat> sometimes uh, I've seen people and myself included where in order to pick up your leg, instead of just picking up the leg, the back tries to pick up the leg for you. So you either get into a tilt, like some people tilt backwards when they're doing lift mm -hmm. leg. Um, I don't have that problem with lift leg, but um, with separate leg. But um, I noticed that my right leg can move. I can pick up my right leg without my back catching, you know, trying to help, but my left leg somehow my back right. tries to lift my left leg, which of course it can't. Right. And um, so I, I guess the point I'm making is that if you're finding yourself tilting, it could be that you're trying to lift your leg with something other than your leg. <laughs> yeah, and um, <laughs> good point. The other thing that, that falls into that is if you are afraid, I noticed that like, um, particularly like if you're doing a, uh, you know, I'd be doing a Taiji form for a, uh, a demonstration and, you know, you're going and, and if you are like nervous about, oh my God, am I going to be able to pull this one off? And there is a tendency to clench your, your butt. You 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 get tight assed in the uh, and then it's very difficult to become sung at that point and uh, because you're tight assed so uh, uh, it is so the cure for that is the same cure which is go back and find the stable point find that point where you're confident and then relax into that and then execute and do that a few times until you got it so that, oh, okay, I got it now. Mm -hmm. And then, then you're, um, you're going to go. Because once that, once the, you get nervous and you start, the, the, the fear kicks in, it's very difficult to relax your butt muscles enough to be able to execute. So you know what I'm talking about, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Uh, <laughs> okay, anybody else? Fred. Uh, when Maria was talking, it caused me to think. For me, if I'll spiral all the way down and focus on not lifting my leg, but lifting my knee. It's so much easier. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. You know, and, 
and even more than lifting the knee, reaching with the knee. You know, mm -hmm. that oh, you reach with the knee, then it's different because then it the knee is, becomes an active participant in the process. And um, it's also a little closer to what you want to do, you know, if you ever have to use that thing as a, uh, as a weapon, you know, you want to reach with the knee because then you have that, that tensegrity that goes throughout the whole system. Whereas um, if you're <laughs> lifting the knee, then it's more of a, a club that you, you're, you're wielding. And in, that, and in that same context, as you're spiraling down and becoming more sung, is it not a little bit like a teeter-totter, where as you become more sung, that knee just lifts itself up because it's the opposite end of the fulcrum? I don't find that personally to be true. Okay. Uh, I find it more uh, two separate things. Okay. First get sung, and then reach with the knee from that extending from that that solid base okay. i think uh i i don't see how that um could be done effectively as a teeter-totter okay it uh it's one of the two two separate kind of kind of deals okay mm -hmm. all right well, good question though thank you okay anybody else all right cool thank you all so much it's been great love you all so no uh no class next week and uh see you in two okay good luck okay, on the class that's uh that thanks. session thanks maria thank you maria love you guys <laughs> Bye -bye. Okay. good night maria good night rick good night Ha, <laughs> ha,